Hi everyone, welcome back to the F8 Studio. I'm Allison and I'm a product marketing manager on the Facebook platform team. We're here at Fort Mason today in San Francisco with Ryan Ogle, CTO of Tinder. Welcome. Thank you. I hope you've been enjoying F8 so far. Very much. Good, good. So let's talk about Tinder. Um, for everybody watching around the world on the live stream that might not necessarily be familiar with the product, can you just give a quick overview of what do you do? What's Tinder? You guys call yourselves a social discovery platform. You know, what is that? And then just how does the app work for those who haven't used it? Yeah, so I'm Ryan, CTO of Tinder. Um, and the idea of Tinder is really kind of a social discovery application. And so it's all about meeting people around you for whatever reason. Um, and we started Tinder about, you know, about four years ago now, um, but it's really about discovering new people around you. I think there's all sorts of applications today around uh, meeting people that you already know, but Tinder's about meeting new people. Mm -hmm. I and mean, how did the idea of this come together? So I know you guys started yeah. an incubator. Um, how did you guys come together and say like, hey, I want to I wanna make a social discovery platform? Yeah, I think the idea came about by this concept that there are all these networks out there already that connect you to people that you already know. But like, we had friends and people that we knew that just had a hard time finding new connections. Like I had a friend who lives in Santa Monica, uh, as a surfer, and every day he would complain like, oh, I don't have any surfing buddies. And yet he's surrounded by surfers all the time. Right. And so technology should be able to help us with these problems. Um, and so Tinder is all about like solving that problem, helping people find other people around you that you want to meet for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you guys have been around since 2012. Yeah. You guys have been longtime integrators of the Facebook SDK. You yep. guys uh, use Facebook login. That's like one of the only ways you can even use Tinder. Um, can you talk more broadly just about how Facebook has been a part of the Tinder journey and the growth that you guys have seen over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, Facebook's a critical part about, uh, of our journey. Um, one of the things that we uh, conceptualized very early on was that other discovery apps require a pretty lengthy onboarding process. You gotta go in, you gotta type in your name, your gender, your age, type of things that you like, that you don't like, it may ask you questions back and forth. It's just a really heavy experience. It takes time, and by the end of that process, you might not even wanna be part of this thing anymore. Yep. And so what's great about Facebook is we realized that like, guess what, this information is already there. Mm -hmm. um, so let's tap into that, and it was all about like a really easy sign on. So one button push, grabbing all of your social uh, connections, or grabbing your interests, grabbing your name, your age, all that stuff, and then in real time, formulating people around you that also uh, kind of match your preferences and your criteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. I'm obviously really excited to see partners having such great experiences on the platform. Um, you guys have also been one of our beta testers and testing new products, which is great. So thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, and you guys have in particular tested this push notifications product that we recently released in Facebook Analytics for apps earlier today. Um, but before we get into that, I also just kind of want to cover push notifications more generally. What do you guys use push notifications for at Tinder? Where do you see the value in that? Yeah, push notifications are just super critical to everything that we do. Um, we've had issues where like our push notification system goes down and you see like retention engagement like drop off immediately. Like, yeah. People just need these things to come back into the app. And so they're really like teasers when things have happened. So like someone sends you a message, it's important that you get a push notification to prompt you to go back into the app. So you get a new map, it's exciting. You go mm -hmm. back into the app and see those things. And so it's really about helping people uh, realize when things have happened in the app that they want to go back and check out. Um, and so that's kind of the, the primary purpose of it. And then we also do things around education. And so like, let's explain to the user how to use this new system or you know, maybe they have their discovering settings set too low and so we can prompt them like, oh, if you do this, that, the other thing, you can find more people or better people or whatnot. Um, so we use it in those kind of two, two contexts. Yeah, and you guys, so it seems like you guys use pushes for a lot of these kind of transactional interactions. Um, and for, with our product, you guys have also designed in-app notifications, which are basically just kind of a richer notifications format. It appears as a card within the app. You can use photos and animated GIFs to customize them. Can you describe just what the initial opportunity that you saw in this product was and what types of use cases you could see this product being applied to? Yeah, I mean, what we love about in-app notifications is that a push notification at its core is really just like a text. It just says, hey, come back yeah. in the app. There's something waiting for you. But these kind of richer in-app notifications allow you to do a lot more with that notification. So you can go in and, and show things to people. You can use animated GIFs. You can use other kind of web views or just in-app uh, screens to educate the user. And so it really gives the user context. Mm -hmm. So like when I get that notification, I can go in there and I can actually see what I'm trying to do and help guide that user in the right direction. Without that, sometimes you kind of lose kind of what the purpose of this thing was in the first place. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, context is king. Yeah. Um, cool. So before this, you guys were also using your own in-house system for push notifications. Yeah. 
Um, and how would you say that the two kind of systems really differ? What would you use each differently for? Yeah, I mean, so we built our own system um, in large part because we just needed to do this. So it's really important. Yeah. Um, I think maybe if this existed like four years ago when we first started, maybe we wouldn't even build our own system. Right. Um, and so what's really nice is that like for new app developers especially, like you can just leverage the stuff that's built into uh, the Facebook framework already. Mm -hmm. And what's also really great is that Facebook already has like a lot of the demographic information that you need already. So if you want to segment push notifications or in-app notifications based on age or gender or location, like that, a lot of, a lot of that stuff is already in there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't even do it myself nowadays if I if I had the choice. Um, but that was kind of like the, the old system, and now we're, we're kind of rethinking how we do push and in-app notifications. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited for you guys to keep using the product. Hopefully, like, we'll get some more feedback on it and be able to kind of iterate and make it that much better. So Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so I want to take a step back and talk a little bit more about Tinder and the growth that you guys have seen more broadly. So you know, looking back from now, now it's 2016. You guys started in 2012. I remember I went to the Crunchies in like, a couple of years, I think it was like 2014, and you guys had won Best New Startup, and I was like, wow, these guys have only been around for like a year and a half, which is insane. Um, so when you look back, you know, from now, and, and what are what do you think are kind of some of the most interesting lessons and growth that you guys have learned when it comes to things like scaling a team, scaling a company, expanding into a bunch of different markets, both domestically and internationally? Um, and what are some of the most interesting challenges that you guys have kind of taken on throughout that process? Yeah, I mean, I think in the beginning, um, we talked a lot about, like, do we want to engineer something first and then kind of figure out the product? Or do we want to build the product first and then figure out the engineering? Mm -hmm. And we chose the latter. Like, product to us was king. It was all about, you know, what is the thing that we want to build? What is the thing that is going to delight our users? Um, and so we did that. And I think we've kind of hit gold. We found this, this perfect thing that people wanted to use and they were excited about using it. Um, but then you have the kind of inverse problem where like, oh, people love it and there's a lot of scale problems and people are just coming into your app right. and they're, they're driving all this traffic. And so then you kind of have to like rethink about how you architect the platform. Um, so lots of learnings there about, uh, you know, kind of building architecture in from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was a, a big challenge. I think also, you know, when you're talking about just a company in general and, and, and hiring employees, to us, culture was just as important as technology. And so, of course, we wanted like, the best developers possible. We wanted people who you know, were super smart and could take this thing to the next level. But as important to that was, do they share our same cultural values? Do okay. they believe in you know, no ego, high communication, high collaboration, passion for the product? And if you get both of those things, I think you have something really special, because you have a company that can do the technical part, but also they're in the trenches with you, and they kind of believe in the thing that you're building. Um, and so that was a really big key to our success early on. It mm -hmm. still is. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great insight. And I think that a lot of the developers here watching on the live stream can definitely take something away from that as well. Um, cool. So looking forward, you know, what's, what's the lowdown? Like, what can we expect from Tinder? Yeah. What is the longer term vision when it comes to growing as a social discovery platform? You guys have done a lot of really interesting iteration on kind of, you know, the initial product that we were so used to with Tinder. Um, a notable example is, you know, the swipe the vote um, yeah. feature that you guys recently surfaced where yeah. you get matched to a political candidate based on your views of different political topics. Yeah. And when you compare that to things like, you know, we want to facilitate great relationships with people, it's kind of a different experience. So it almost kind of begs the question of just like, what is the Tinder mission more broadly? And like, what is kind of the plan in terms of executing on that? Yeah, I mean, I think our broader plan is around social discovery in general, right? I think the opportunity in front of us is just so big. Um, and so, you know, I can't talk about specifically what we're doing, but what I can tell you is there are very, very big things coming. Uh, I have a big release coming out in the next uh, few weeks or month. And I think what, you know, the, some of the things that you will, you'll see, uh, mm -hmm. such as Swipe the Vote, which is like very different from kind of what the core Tinder experience is, um, is us to start to test new concepts, uh, things that are outside of what you might traditionally think about when you think of Tinder. Um, and so it's a really exciting time for Tinder. I think in the first couple of years, it was just about like keeping up with demand and perfecting kind of this engine that was humming and, and keeping the, the engagement high and giving the users the things that they want. And now we're able to, I think, breathe a little bit. Now that we have this kind of engine working and we have the scale problems fixed. And now it's about kind of testing these new things. 
um, that are really going to be interesting and, and, and fun for us developers. Awesome. Well, looking forward to seeing everything that you guys accomplish and you know, the time to come. And one last question for you. So as you know, F8 is a developers conference. There are tons of developers here building really great products and watching around the, li around the world on the live stream who are also building really great apps and products. If you had to give them one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, let's see. I think that you know, product first is the thing that um, eludes a lot of um, a lot of developers because you know I as a developer love the technical challenge. You know, it's really interesting to build something new, but if you want to build something that has adoption that people love, you should really use the engineering to back the idea. And so, as much as you possibly can, iterate on that idea early on. Figure out what it is that people want, and then build a technology around that. Don't do it the universe, because the worst thing in the world is you build this this monstrosity, and no one wants to use it because the idea isn't good. Um, so I'd say product first. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank this you. was great. Yeah.